500 horsepower and the genes of a Formula One car. It's as fast as a Vagon. It's actually even as fast as a, as a McLaren F1. It handles better, it's much easier to drive. The GT3 car takes that same concept, but to a different level. This is the McLaren MP4 12C GT3. In 2011, the English sports car company gave their response to the Mercedes SLS AMG GT3 with their own thoroughbred race car. They've done an outstanding job of, of uh, designing this car, uh, but they've also taken key elements of the car and gone to outside partners to help them develop the car. And that's exactly what we've done with the GT project. So very much taken our, our key strengths of, of what McLaren have to, have to offer and what we have to offer and combined them to, to create this car. The GT racer is based on the MP4 12C road car. The only things they have in common, though, are the doors and the roof. The monocoque is made of carbon, and the six-speed gearbox is now a full 80 kilograms lighter. The aerodynamics of this vehicle look to promise very good downforce. In 2009, McLaren introduced their MP4 12C onto the market, a supercar which could compete against the big boys like the Lamborghini Gallardo and the Porsche 911 GT3. The GT3 version contained years of development, sophisticated technology and all the F1 know-how. And the best of all, it's available to buy for an almost unbeatable price. So first of all, the price of the car will be £310,000. Now that's a uh, cost for a carbon chassis race car. And also it's going to be complete. It's not, not going to be any hidden extras in there. The car will be absolutely ready to race. The MP4 12C's racing debut was in the Blancpain racing series in Navarra. The car's platform has been specially designed to allow you to transform the car to a GT1, GT2 or GT hybrid class without any serious problems. So far, 20 have already been sold to motor racing teams and in the next three years the English company is planning on selling another 60 of their cars. For McLaren, selling this car isn't all about profit though. really want this car to be the cheapest car to run on the grid if possible. We want it to, to give this car to the best teams out there, so people that are winning races doing a really good job with the car and keep the residual values of the car as high as The first ever McLaren showroom opened in London, causing huge amounts of interest from the media. It's great for us. I think it's it's a really, I'm just saying congratulations to Ron and to the family because it's, it's a, a great stepping stone. Uh, this great achievement, I think, you know, they've been working towards this for a long, long time. And I just feel quite, quite blessed that I'm able to be here at the time where it all started. When it comes to actually building the car, that's the bit that was the really good fun. And uh, I love building factories, which we've just completed another uh, Norman Foster factory, and uh, it's going to be unique in many ways. And I think um, only time will tell how successful we'll be. But so far, so good. Our dealer network now unfolding, this being the first. 35 dealerships in some of the uh, best locations in the world. We've got some great dealers and I'm absolutely convinced that we're going to be successful. Having a McLaren car uh, that can really go up against a Ferrari and other top manufacturers like that, I think it's very exciting. There's obviously a lot more to come after this, but for, for, for the first car, I think it's an amazing start, starting point. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a great, uh, privilege to be a part of it. It really handles better than anything I've ever driven, but uh, honestly, it just it turns so well. And then when you get on power, the mechanical balance moves and it gives you great traction. The thing that our customers are going to like about the 12C is everything. The driving experience and the ownership experience. We focused on both. The ownership experience is going to be because of the after-sales service that our best dealers in the world are going to offer. The driving experience, well, the level of technology, the level that, of engineering that comes out of McLaren and the Formula One team, the build process is sure assuring the highest quality. The performance of this car is such that you can drive it on a track and, put, and do lap times that you will have never achieved in any other car, and yet drive it on a shopping run as well, because it can be so docile when it wants to be, and it can be so performance-oriented when it wants to be. The technology 
technology, the innovation, the, the uh, British manufacturing designers, engineers that are, uh, uh, came together to create this, this is the beginning of hopefully um, an amazing uh, legacy for, for McLaren. The focus today is on the 12C, which we find is a magnificent car. But our goal as McLaren is not to be on the market with just one car and see what happens. We have a plan. We have other products which we think are going to meet other needs for other customers, which will be launching throughout the rest of this decade. So this is just the beginning. You ain't seen nothing yet. superlative automobiles from Maranello. The Ferrari story lives off the success of its race cars. And breathtaking models made for the highway. Both worlds meet in the loudest production Ferraris of all time. The Challenge Stradale. The Ferrari Challenge Stradale emerged as a souped-up version of the 360 Medina. The inspiration? The cars pitted against each other in the Ferrari Challenge series, fighting for centimetres and hundreds of seconds. All the experience gained went into the Challenge Stradale. lighter and with a more aggressive look, racing law transformed the already sporty Medina into a true street racer. of ultra-light but immensely expensive Formula One carbon composites saved a considerable amount of weight. Sliding Lexan windows, if required. Other features, special aluminium rims, carbon ceramic brakes and carbon rear view mirrors, all from the race cars. Improved aerodynamics have increased road holding by 50% compared to the Medina. Even with the 1.8 meter wide spoiler, more was barely possible. And it looks good, as the double foil under the Challenge Stradale ensures that it sticks to the track. The 400 horsepower which drove the Medina have been increased in the Challenge Stradale with identical displacement to 425 thanks to the fine tuning and titanium components. Wherever you look in the cockpit, it evokes motorsport. The central console, a bright red starter button, launch control, switchable ASR, reverse gear. Sheer indulgence. Carbon composites in the interior too, and Alcantara covered bucket seats available in three sizes. Carbon, the magic ingredient of Formula One cars, accounts for 110 kilograms of weight saving. One exception to the Spartan discipline of racing, air conditioning is standard. This is Fiorano, Ferrari's house circuit. The heart of the marquee beats here. So does the racing pulse of the test driver. He's about to drive six fast laps right in Enzo Ferrari's back garden. This is where Ferrari trains for Formula One. This is where the Challenge Stradale will show what it can do. The street car is full of surprises. Amazing speed in the corners, breaking points almost beyond the horizon. One practical idea, the length of the right-hand paddle of the steering wheel mounted gear shift has been increased to allow quick changes up coming out of bends. The Challenge Stradale offers an unmistakable race car feeling. The drive-slip regulation works impeccably. Ferrari has a blindingly fast car, but one which also stays under the driver's control. A rare combination and a rare sound too.
even sharp braking at corners fails to tax the Stradale and the driver hurtles out of the curve at close to 300 kilometers an hour top speed. of Fiorano can be addictive, but the stewards ensure withdrawal. But even this Ferrari has rivals. When it first came out, it was up against the BMW M3 CSL and the Porsche GT3. In Italy, of course, it enjoys home team advantage. The Bella Macina is the absolute fan's favourite. It's a Bella Macina? Oh, fantastic. <laughs> You hear it coming a long time before it comes into view, the loudest Ferrari of all time. At launch, the price was 165,000 euros. Time flies, and today, not even the Italian authorities would certify a car that, while officially rated at 97 decibels, typically screams at 105. revving symphony of the Stradale is to blame for the driver's face fixed in a permanent grin. Decide for yourself. ruling went against the challenge Stradale, judged as being too loud for the Anno de Rien race circuit. And alas, the French weren't the only spoil sports.